y'all and welcome back. So I'm so glad you're here and boy oh boy did my weekend fall right into place with Friday's devotional, The Chain of Hands. <laughs> we spent the majority of the weekend going around helping different ones who needed things. You know, we helped my daddy on Friday. We helped James's mom and Cody and Sarah on Saturday. And it just, I couldn't help but kind of giggle because <laughs> there we were just going along, you know, helping others and knowing that one day, you know, they'll in turn help others and it'll just be a chain of hands. And <laughs> it's just like, wow, who would have thought <laughs> that Friday's devotional would be a, uh, what's the word? Um, a glimpse, I guess, for lack of a better word, into what my weekend was going to be. <laughs> but it was fun. We've had a great weekend. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. We're going to be reading from our little book. Hold me up a little longer, Lord. The title is Program My Mind for Optimism. That's what we're going to be reading. For me, it's on page 146 and 147. So, the title again is Program My Mind for Optimism. I'm just, I don't even know what this is about, but I'm already been feeling optimistic about the week ahead. I'm just going to try to train my mind and had no, I had no idea this was going to be what we we're going to read, but I'm just going to train my mind, start thinking positive, and um, just looking forward to the week ahead, and just see what the Lord has in store for us. So, I had no idea that that's what I was going to be reading about, but that's where I'd already kind of made up my mind. But it's, So, it's kind of like the Lord is confirming for me the things that I'm feeling and going through and praying about and all this and that, God is kind of in his own way, the way he does with me, is confirming some things for me. And just like the revelation he gave me, you know, for Friday about, you know, who I was praying to, that I could ask these impossible things because I'm not asking them of man, but I'm asking them of the creator, you know, the one who created everything in six days and rested on the seventh. It didn't even take him a full seven days to do everything. He did it in six, you know. So, God is kind of confirming to me some things. And um, with all of that, you know, I am feeling optimistic. And I don't want to let my personal feelings get in the way of what God wants to do. So, it's kind of ironic <laughs> that... The title is Program My Mind for Optimism because that's exactly what I've been working on self, you know. So let's just get started and see what God wants to share with us today. Help me to be more optimistic, God, to smile more, laugh more, make more joyful, affirmate, affirmative, sorry, affirmative statements, not only for my sake, my own sake, but for the sake of the children. How can they feel good about the world and themselves and being alive, especially in this great country, if I'm always singing the blues? How can I expect them to respect or love things if I continually tear them down? How can they grow into a happy, healthy, confident, success-likely people? Don't let me be a phony. Help me to be honest about good and bad as I see it. The world is not all sweetness and light, as they discover only too soon. But guard my tongue. Whether the subject be the state of the nation, the school, this house, the neighbors, our relatives, their dad, or them, or me, let me admire and rejoice more often than I criticize. Help me to cancel out negative statements and even negative mental dwelling on sickness and troubles and the general lousiness of life. Put good, strong, glowing words and images in their place. For you made our minds like perfect computers, too perfect sometimes. Whatever this perfect instrument is fed is fused right back. And you have given parents the subtle but awesome power to shape our children's lives. However they grow and change, they can never escape the early, daily, programming of their minds. 
Please help me to fill my mind and the minds of my children with the ideas and attitudes that will help them stride confidently and cheerfully into this marvelous adventure, life. Oh, it is so true, y'all. And you know, how many times have y'all heard me say it? I, I feel like a broken record sometimes, but there's life and death in the tongue. Your words, there is power in your words. You can speak life or death into a situation. It's, it's the truth. And I mean, I've seen it in different times and aspects of my life. And it was funny that I was watching a YouTuber that I watch. I'm not going to say who they are because um, I'm not shaming them. But at the same time, I was like, oh, you really don't need to do that. But they were trying a different type of vegetable they had never tried before. And they had made it, you know, for the family. And the parent, one of the parents, took a bite of it and automatically was just like, that was the grossest thing they had ever tasted. That was, you know, it was horrible, yada, yada, yada. And the children were present during all of this. And so, what do you think the children's reaction to the vegetables were? Negative, because that's what the parent's reaction was. And I don't think the parent did it to like, you know, turn their kids off of this vegetable. I think they were just, you know, being with family and this and that. And, and I am in no means judging this person at all. I've been guilty of it. I've done the same thing. But it just showed me how ugh, we really should be careful or more aware of how we speak about things and situations in front of our children. Um, it is no secret that our world is going to pot. It is no secret that the United States is not the United States that so many of us grew up in. Um, there is so much just in your face, anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-Christian. Um, you're not allowed to make fun of certain individuals, but it's okay to pick on the Christians. Um, you know, that's how it is. But there, you know, yeah, there's a lot of bad out there. There's a lot of negative, but there's also a lot of positive because there's a lot of people who are just good people that love the Lord, love the Bible, love his truth, you know, live as good as they can, as wholesome as they can, and, you know, love this great country. And they're not, not everybody you meet on the street and pass in the store or in your car is a bad person. There is more good there than there is bad. It's just the enemy likes us to focus more on the bad. So they're more, he puts that out there more and in your face to see. And it's just right there glaring at you. But if you take the time to not focus on that, then you get to see there's really a lot of good out there. And this is something I'm having to do because I get overwhelmed sometimes with just how much negativity and just anti-God everything is. And how many people are just so okay to bash God. There, there's no fear of God anymore in this country. None. I feel like. I feel like the fear of God for the most part of the country is just, it's not there anymore. And sadly, it's because... So much of God has been removed from, from so many aspects. Like, I remember growing up in school, you did your Pledge of Allegiance, you did a Bible scripture, and you prayed before you started any of your classwork. They don't do that anymore. You can't even mention God in schools, but it's okay for drag queens to come in and teach your kids how to perform at a drag show. It's okay for them to talk about, you know, sexual acts that can be performed on oneself and um, it's okay for them to put all this kind of stuff in your kid's face, but you can't mention God. There's something messed up. And we who love the Lord and fear the Lord with a healthy fear, um, we kind of, kind of get like just, I'm, I'm speaking for myself, I kind of get so consumed with, they're so anti-God, so, they don't love our Lord, and they are just this, this, this. And I get so focused, hyper-focused on that that I get blinded by all the good that there is out there. You know, you, you see these parents that's going before these school boards that are standing up 
for these children in these schools. You see, you hear these parents every day that are pulling their kids from these schools. You hear these parents every day that are going to for, before these boards proclaiming Jesus as Lord, you know. So they don't want to show you that as much, but they want to show you all the other stuff. And I don't know about you, but I just get so, I get to the place sometimes where I just have to turn it out off. Not to act like it's not there, but I don't want that to just overtake me and cause me not to be able to see and be optimistic about our God and the beautiful things of our world. You know, um, there's beauty in everything. Sometimes you have to really search for it and look for it, but there's beauty there. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I made the, the comment, I think it was Friday, I was telling y'all that I was, or maybe Thursday, that I was making more of a conscious effort to make eye contact with people, to smile, to speak, to give a compliment where it's acceptable and just show the love of God because there's so much evil out there, so much of it, but all it takes is just that one little bit of glimmer of God and it can overshadow every bit of the evil. And so that's what I'm trying to do because I used to find myself, I would walk in the stores, I would purposely not look at people because I just, I just didn't want to be bothered. And I realized that was so wrong of me that I need to look at people and make eye contact and I need to smile and just show, hey, there's some good out there, you know? So I'm going to make, I'm, I've started making a conscious effort to be more optimistic to look for the good versus all of the bad. I mean, if you want to, it depends on what you look for is what you're going to find. If all you want to see is bad and misery, then honey, you're going to find it. It's right there willing, waiting, willing to just be there and show up with for you anytime you want to find it. But if you make up your mind that you want to see the good, you're also going to find that. It's all in what we choose to make up our mind to see and focus on. And I look at my life and where God has brought me, and I have so much to be thankful for. Why do I want to waste my time and energy? It takes so much energy to be so negative. And then it makes you feel bad. Then you end up feeling bad and you just don't feel good. And you don't know why you don't feel good because it's all of that negative energy. But once you replace that negative energy with that optimism, with that positive energy, with the love of the Lord, then you start realizing, oh my goodness, I just feel so good because it truly does make me feel so good when I'm able to smile at somebody and I see them smile back or I'm able to speak to them or I'm able to say, you know, give them a compliment and see the look on their face. I end up feeling 10 feet tall and bulletproof because I just feel so good when I do that. And so it's kind of selfish on my part, but I want to keep feeling that way. So I'm going to keep looking for somebody to smile at, somebody to speak to, somebody to compliment because the world needs that. It needs us to show them the love of the Lord because you never know with that one smile, with that one kind word, speaking to someone, you never know what that may spark in them and then you may get a chance to witness to them. We just never know. We never know the opportunities we have missed. I never know the opportunities I have missed by not speaking, by you know, not making eye contact, you know, trying to just kind of go my, be in my own little world. I don't know the opportunities I've missed to talk about the Lord with others. So that's what I'm going to strive to do today and the rest of the week and the rest of my life. Now that's not going to say we're not going to have some down days. That's just life. We have those. There's days we just don't feel good. But for the most part, I'm going to do my best to focus on the positive and on the good and not even give the devil an ounce of my attention or time by seeing what he's got out there. Because he don't have anything out there I want. Nothing. So, join me. Let's be optimistic. <laughs>
I love y'all so much. Thank you for being here with me. I hope you have a wonderful day. I pray God bless you so abundantly that you just keep drinking from your saucer. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all. Thank you.